Donnie's Dildo. Hey, did you know that the straight-to-DVD smash hit S. Darko actually had a prequel? Can we hurry this up? I want to rub one out. Danny Darkskin is a fucking stupid movie that indie goth chicks love the shit out of for some reason. Have you ever used the word deep in conjunction with this movie without preceding it with the word not? Congratulations, you're fucking dumb. Johnny DeVito, who the movie is titled after, is some stupid upper-privileged white kid that has no real problems but thinks he's so depressed and shit. I can relate to this character's plight because I, too, am a faggot. <laughs> One day he wakes up from sleeping and walks outside to find a giant bunny rabbit. Put on your serious faces, everyone. This is a goddamn drama. Bunny rabbits are clearly what frowns in solemn situations are built on the foundation of. I already want to kill myself. So the bunny tells Donnie Trejo exactly what time the world is going to end at. And then a jet engine comes out of fucking nowhere and kills his room. I guess fate had some kind of missile-guided vendetta against my chemical romance CDs. <laughs> oh, God, I wish. And then they react to that. Who gives a shit? Time for Danny Dickhead to go to school. At the bus stop, there are these guys making fun of this fat Asian bitch, and she's all, SHUT UP! You may be asking yourself why I'm telling you about the stupid random Asian bitch. It's because she's an extremely prevalent character. That must mean she's somehow important or relevant to something or has any business being in the movie at all, right? Fucking asshole. Right? Eat shit. Fucking right. Then he goes to school and his teacher is Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon actually produced this movie, and she's a teacher in a bunch of other movies. Something tells me she's got some fucked up fetish for being some underappreciated teacher who touches the hearts of her students. So if you ever have sex with Reese Witherspoon, there you go. Just kidding, I know you'll never have sex with Reese Witherspoon. She told me herself. We talk about you all the time while we're having sex. Then this new girl comes to class and she looks like the bitch from Twilight. I mean, she's not, but I hate her anyway. And then there's some fucked old lady with dumb jazz. And then there's some really fucking old lady that just wanders back and forth from a mailbox. So after the old lady introduction scenes, the fucking bunny finally decides to show up again. And he tells D Fuck, do I have to do this every time I say his name? He tells him to flood something. So then they're waiting for the bus, and they're making fun of the fat Asian girl again. And now she's wearing earmuffs, so she can't hear them make fun of her. What a great and compelling character this fat Asian is. I'm so glad she's in the movie. Anyway, they don't have to go to the school, because school is flooded. And then, do you remember that Twilight bitch that's not the Twilight? Yeah. As Donnie did. Day Lewis is walking home, he sees her getting picked on but <laughs> What the fuck? Seth Rogen? What the fuck? Seth Rogen? Seth what? what? Holy shit. Holy fucking shit, this movie is dang. just put together the puzzle. Okay, this is gonna fuck your mind. So anyway, the bitch is getting picked on by Seth Rogen and some other dude. And she's like, Can you ask me? But, you know, ten times more annoying. Then Daniel Craig walks her home and he's like, Hey, you wanna go out with me? I'm a teenager. <laughs> you know what's gay? Teenage romance. The stupidest shit ever. If you're under 19, just go for passionless vagina, seriously. And, like, start a betting pool on when your friends are gonna break up with each other because that's always fun. Anyway, then he goes to his therapist because he's got rich, white, concerned parents. And then she's like, Let's try hypnotherapy. The, the bat was her, like, squeezing her nipples. Okay, glad I could clear that she up. She hypnotizes Don Knotts' dark hole, and then he turns into, like, some babbling retard. It's not really that violent of a transformation. He talks about his new bunny friend while touching his dick. That's not a joke, by the way. This is drama. I got my solemn shirt and professional pants on. Just so happens they got a hole for my balls. Fuck it, let's get this moving. They go back to the school, and then they try to find out who flooded the school, and then Donald Duckhole goes to poop or something. And then the guy that was with Seth Rogen, like, bursts out of the bathroom stall with a knife and he's like, yo, motherfucker, I think you did that shit. And then Donnie poops. Finn. Just kidding, the movie isn't over yet. We gotta have a conversation about Smurfs having sex. Drama! Serious! And then the old bitch with the jowls is angry that Reese Witherspoon is letting children read books about stuff. And then Donnie Dickhead sees fucking chest worms and they do something, so he sees where people go and then it tells him to go. And then he finds a gun. And then he has a gun. Okay. And then he goes to talk to the science teacher about time travel. Because the bunny said he could time travel. I've been waiting my whole life for a big bunny to give me the green light to time travel. And then he finds out that the old lady wrote it a book about time travel. And that'll go fucking nowhere for now. Let's talk about their stupid science project. Diabetes dark toes and his stupid twilight looking girlfriend make these sunglasses that you put on a babel. And Seth Rogen and his friend realize that this has to be stopped. The friend initially tries to deconstruct the dangerous idea with logic. Unfortunately, logic does not work in the world of twilight. Or women. So almighty Seth sees it fit to finally intervene. Using 
his deistic clairvoyance, he finds the point in the girl which will make her brave. Those tables are safe from optometric oppression. For now, Rogan has shown us mercy on this fine day. Then Fanny Dickhole takes his girlfriend to go see a movie and she falls asleep at the movie and then the bunny is watching the movie with them. Then the bunny takes off his bunny mask and it turns out he's a people all along. Well, he's missing an eye, so he's not really people. People have two eyes. People. He tells Connie to go burn down some asshole's house. And the super important Asian girl is in the talent show dancing. It's like a plot contribution dance. It's really important. And Reese Witherspoon gets fired for letting people read. As well she should. You're raising a literate generation to usurp us, you cunt. Reading is for nerds. They're all smelly, horrible people. Is that what you want to live under the tyranny of? And because old bitch McJowls had a fucking moist clit for that guy who got his fucking house burned down. And she's the leader of this creepy little girl cheerleading deal that Johnny Phantom's little sister's part of. And the pedophile overlords that judge that sort of thing took great interest into accepting them as virgin sacrifices. And since old bitch was busy with her jowls, dish shit, I'm starting to run out of these. Johnny Elfman's mom has to shepherd them to the subjugation. Also, his dad, like, dissipates out of reality or something, so he's not there either. Then there's a scene where Johnny Trump takes the fat Asian bitch's earphones off and he's like, everything's gonna be okay for you. And she goes, shut up! And waddles off like a fucking Vietnamese penguin. And that was her contribution to the movie. Truly, it was an important one. Fuck you. So because the parents are out of town, Donnie Dipshit and his faggot sister decide to have a Halloween party. But then he sees the chest worms again and he decides it's time to go send a letter to the fucking old lady that wrote the time travel book because now it's important. Because the world's about to end like the bunny said. Or maybe it's not. And then the old lady's not there so they go into like her basement. And then Seth Rogen and his friend are there. The Rogen knew the time of reckoning was nigh. So Rogen's sidekick holds Donnie Romero down at knife point. While Seth Rogen himself sets the stage for fate to take its correct path. Then, the Rogan turns to his friend, and he says, Seth, there's a car coming, let's go! Seth, there's a car coming, let's go! Seth, there is a car coming. Let's go. And from there, Everything falls into place. Donnie Lloyd Webber's stupid fucking girlfriend gets run over by the car, and then the giant bunny gets out of the car. Only he's not the same giant bunny, he has two eyes. Until Daniel Tosh shoots him, then he only has the one eye. And is dead. Then Dirty Dankhole takes his dead-ass girlfriend to the top of a hill and he sees an airplane. And his mom and his sister are in the airplane, but who gives a fuck about them? Donnie Dingleberries all of a sudden gets superpowers out of fucking nowhere and uses them to rip the jet engine off of the plane and send it back in time. Then it kills him before any of this can fucking happen. That should have been the start of the movie, not the end of it. Now you may be confused. That's because the explanation as to what happened is actually not contained to naked human perception anywhere in this movie. So I will explain what happened to all of you naked humans. Now when this movie came out to figure out what happened, you had to go to the Donnie Darko website and figure it out by solving a series of puzzles. Keep in mind this movie came out in 2001. This was the heyday of dial-up internet and when AOL was still a thing. But if for whatever reason you actually did this, well, you're fucking stupid. Probably so stupid that you didn't really realize this is a goddamn sci-fi movie. It just never tells you. You think you're all Indian goth, bitch? Guess what? You're a fucking nerd. Since this is fucking stupid and has nothing to do with the movie that I personally saw, I will interpret this much better. Seth Rogen is the key to everything. This movie's actually grounded in realism. At the point where he turns to the other guy and addresses him as Seth, it creates a quantum flux. The universe cannot obey two masters. And so it starts to collapse upon itself. This creates a second universe to accommodate the extra Seth. However, the other Seth is not actually Seth Rogen. Therefore, he's not powerful enough to sustain his own universe and is doomed to collapse upon itself. So you may be asking, why did Rogen do this? Because he knows what I know. He knows about that thing that you have on your ass? I think it looks like a mosquito bite, but it's been there for like three years. Oh, and also that this movie's fucking dumb. Rogen! <laughs>